So bring me back to the beginning. Iran, born, Christian, Assyrian and Armenian? Assyrian and Armenian. Okay. Yeah. Very briefly, what is Assyrian? Assyrian is Babylonian. They're the first Christians, first warriors. Uh, you know, them and Armenians always debate on who was the first Christian. If you read the Bible, you see Assyrians all the time. Aramaic, so I speak Aramaic, so Passion of the Christ. You speak Aramaic? I speak Aramaic, wow. so in the movie Passion of the Christ, Jesus, we bro. understand what they were saying. Wow. Nobody else. Well, I mean, except for seven of us, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, you grew up speaking the language the Bible was written in? Yes, yes. Is it different in Aramaic than it's, it is in uh, English? So, I'll give you our numbers. It's Assyrian. Yeah, it's it's very, close. That's right. Yes. Oh, they got to make it about themselves. Right? <laughs> Every yeah. single time. Yeah. We were having a nice yeah. moment over here with the Christians. Uh, let them and have then something. The Jews in. come in and... <laughs> Anyway, uh, okay, so so you're in Iran, Shah falls. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Iran during the, the, the reign of the Shah? So the Shah goes from being this 21-year-old guy, comes in, his father is this powerful man who is kicked out a couple times. He is feared, he is hated, he is, you know, respected, he's a guy that raises his son in a way that they're not that close. It's like, you know, it's the father, it's the Shah, the king, and the son has to go do all this different work. He spoke seven different languages, the Shah, smart guy. He could do interviews in literally seven different languages. He comes in, he changes the game. Uh, Mossadegh was a guy that uh, a lot of the, he would be the modern day Bernie Sanders. So they wanted Mossadegh to be the president. He was gonna give the oil money back to the people, all mm. this stuff. And then with the help of CIA, you'll read this uh, in many different uh, places, the Shah ends up coming in, uh, he uh, becomes the king, and it changes everything in Iran, you know, education improves women, freedom, voice, they can become lawyers, you know, there was a entertainment aspect to it, Frank Sinatra, all these guys used to go to Iran, it was top three richest, like the wealthiest of the wealthiest in the 70s, in the late 60s, you would go to Iran, Burma and Cuba. Was okay. it like Dubai? I'm trying to imagine what it is. It was like is. Dubai. Okay. I mean, listen, uh, El Elizabeth Taylor was dating the ambassador Zahedi. They were together. So she would go to visit him, Elizabeth <laughs> okay. Taylor. And but she really? dated everybody, but she was also dating Zahedi <laughs> at the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, Khomeini from France is sending these tapes. Before there was YouTube, there were these tapes that would go viral. So guys were sitting there recording these tapes and giving it away to people. And Khomeini's talking about how bad it is, what's going on in Iran, and how he put this party together, the 2,500 year party in Iran, and that was the end of it. I cannot believe you spend this much money. Look how much money you're spending on the lavish party. He invited everybody to Iran. If you ever see the pictures of this party, it's insane what he did with the party. And then eventually, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter comes in, December 31st, 1977, there's a toast. Jimmy Carter says, this is a very important partner to us. The moment he, le imagine New Year's, you can be anywhere in the world, he's in Iran. Okay, he leaves, next thing you know, gradually revolution starts, mm. one by one by one, and then eventually nine million people revolted after this event that took place. Uh, Sinama wrecks fire in a city called Abadan. Abadan is like a uh, bunch of provinces. It's a, it was a beautiful place. This movie theater, 400 people are in there. They lock the doors from both ends. They turn the place on fire. People die. Oh, wow. The police Shit. station is right across the street. Khomeini says it was uh, Shah's people that did a Savak. Savak is like the CIA MI6. And the Shah says, we didn't do anything here. Why would we kill 400 people? Khomeini's, uh, Shah's people are like Khomeini's people did this. Anyways, the people believe Khomeini's camp and they said Shah was behind this. Long story short, I'm born October 1878, which is at the peak of Sinema Rick's fire. Uh, my mother, when her, you know, we're going to the hospital, curfew 10 o'clock, they have to be escorted. I go to the hospital, I'm born. Uh, three months later, Shah's out, and then Iran falls, and the rest is history. What happens to Christians in Iran at this time? It's a scary time to be a Christian. It's a scary time to be Baha'i. It is a scary time to be pro-Shah. It is a scary time to be uh, any military leader, part of Shah's camp, they were, you know, Your killing them left and right. Your father was connected to the Shah? No, he was a fan of the Shah. Huh. My, my dad was a regular guy. We don't come from a, a lot of money. 
Uh, but my dad, they were imperialist, and my mother, they were communist. Mm. My mother's family, they were strong communist and at the time. And so they couldn't stand the Shah. You know, she, they were happy the Shah fell. Hmm. So I'm in, I'm in the middle of my mom thinks rich people are greedy. My dad thinks poor people are lazy. And I'm <laughs> seeing this debate going back. It's yeah, the yeah. best debate ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, are your uh, father's Welcome son. to America. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you but let me you tell you, <laughs> my, my mother taught me the paranoia side. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you need that in business. I think you need that in life. I think you need that. What do you mean by that, the paranoia? Paranoia, where you got it, you know, only the paranoid survive. Andy Grove, the Hungarian entrepreneur who ran Intel, he's the godfather of Silicon Valley where everybody admired this guy. He wrote a book in the 80s and maybe the early 90s called Only the Paranoid Survive. In the mm. game of business, if you're not paranoid, boom, somebody takes you out. Same in the military, same in business, you need a little bit of that. So growing up in this kind of a climate in Iran, you're always like, are you Christian? Why do you ask instead of yes, I am? You know, uh -huh. hey, what nationality are you? Instead of giving the answers, like what's the motive behind mm. the question because you're a little bit paranoid. So that kind of helps. I know it's, people may look at it and say, was well, that really a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a very good thing. Okay, so then from Iran, yeah. you guys flee. Yes. Go to Germany. Yes. Refugee camp. Yep. Are you worried about going to like a camp in Germany given the history yeah, of that? Yeah, that was cool. Wow. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way, man. I mean, for us in Iran, when Khomeini died, uh, this is like, he died June 2nd, I wanna say, 89. Uh, June 2nd or 3rd, he dies. I'm in school, parents can't find me. You know, there is no Uber, tax, this, that, riots protesting everywhere. I'm trying to find my mom, I'm 10 years old. And we finally do, they take us home. We get to the house, my mom and dad have this exchange together. We gotta get the hell out of here. Oh. We're not staying here. If he stays here, he's gotta serve the military here. Boom, six weeks later, we go to Germany refugee camp. We're on the plane, Lufthansa, and you hear the announcer saying, you know, uh, you're free to drink alcohol. We've officially crossed the border. And that's when everybody felt free. Because nobody thought it was real until they that said moment. you can drink alcohol. Wow. Wow. It was a very wild moment, yeah. I will never forget that.